Hello, Groveland Township. We thought we'd do a little bit of a historical tribute for some of the different locations here in the township. First, we're going to talk about Township Hall and the fire stations to give you a little background on it. For those of you who haven't been here a long time and don't know, this building was about half the size it is right now, up until about 1996, when Don and the previous board actually put away money the old-fashioned way and spent about $400,000 doubling the size of the building, and really, it looks like it was originally built this way. If you go downstairs, there's a couple of little lingering things that show that it was really twice the size of now that it actually used to be, but it was a great project and it was completed in 1996 just before I became supervisor. This was, I'm sure, carved out of state land at some point in time, and the park that's in the back was originally done around 2000. It was a suggestion of Shirley Scramlin. And we built the park back there, but we had to go to the DNR. This parcel that the property is on right now, that the township hall's on, includes about half of that park area. We had to go to the state of Michigan and ask the DNR folks if we could clear a little bit bigger area back there, and they let us do it as long as we didn't put permanent structures on it. So that's how the park came about. Then about 2022, roughly, uh, our treasurer, Teresa Bills, wanted to do an update to the park because it had been up for a while and it needed a little revamping. So she took on the project of improving and cleaning up the playground area and adding some additional features in there that we didn't have before. That's how this township office got here. It's been here a long time. It's all paid for. We just got done putting a new roof on it. We've got our buildings in really excellent shape. What I'd like to do next is go to the two fire stations we have and tell you some of the history on that because it's pretty interesting. We'll go to station one next. Here we are at Station 1. We're going to run inside and film because it's kind of loud next to Dixie Highway. Well, now we're at Station number 1, the one on Dixie Highway that we've had the longest. For those of you who don't know, this building has got to be at least 70-some years old. Um, and it's had a lot of different uses over the years. At one time, this was the doctor's office that owned the lake that ultimately became Groveland Oaks Parks. And I'm giving you the information as best I can from about 40 years of memory here. Uh, other uses in this building besides being the doctor's office at one time it was actually a Kaiser Fraser dealership I'm told and if you don't know what a Kaiser Fraser is it's a car that they haven't made since about 1954 I think was the last one uh, subsequent to that it also at one point in time I think was an Oakland County Sheriff's Office and last it was the uh, Oakland County Road Commission's office and that's who we supposedly bought it from at that time. One of the few commercial buildings really in the township. And so while it's worked okay for us, this building has been added to one, two, at least three or four times and has about six or seven heating plants in it. And because of the way it's been added to over the years, there's no way to tie the electric service separate from like the state police upstairs to the fire department downstairs. The training center on the side was built has its own heating system. This has got a heating system here, plus a couple of overheads for the trucks. And one of the disadvantages of this, if you wonder why we're replacing it, is the bays that are in the bottom where the tanker truck is, meant that we had to order a custom made tanker truck that's kind of a squished oval tank instead of a normal round one and pay extra for that. And even then, it's really a tight fit to get it under the doorway there. When we move to the new station over on the township's property, you're gonna see that all of it's got the tall, like 14 foot doors that make it easy for the rigs to get in and out. So this building has a mixed use uh, over the past. We got it originally from the road commission. It's been pretty good, we take good care of it, but it is an old building with a lot of uh, quirks to it, if you will, that we can't change. And the state police detachment for out here is actually upstairs. In the new building, they're going to be on the front half of the building on the same level we are, and they and we uh, will be sharing our fire department and state police for some of the training room facilities. So this building's got a long history of different uses here, and when we're done with it, uh, it's part of the payment to the contractor, Barry Bass, for the new building. He gave us a very good price for it after we had it appraised. We really got pretty much top buck for it, we think, and I'm sure it will be put to some other good uses in the future. That is the history of this building, so you know. Doctor's office, one time I believe it was Sheriff's Post, Kaiser Fraser dealership, and an Oakland County Road Commission office until it finally became ours. So next we're gonna go to station two, the one that we built, 
some years ago, uh, just down Grange Hall Road, which is built as a fire station for us. Now we're at Station 2, the one that we built on Grange Hall Road to cover the east side of the township. <clears throat> this is the first station where we actually proactively picked the location. Station 1 was because it was the only commercial building we could get at the time they purchased it. Station 2, we were looking to try and centrally locate this on the east half of the township because most of the population is actually on the east half of the township. We built this, I think it's about 20 years ago. Uh, the building's all paid for. There was a barn back here, an old centennial barn, which was removed. And uh, the station was built and it was done with funds that we got from a suit that we had with uh, Stapelex, uh, or not with Stapelex, excuse me, with the uh, mining company, Tri-City, I think was where the money came from for this originally. And it was paid for all at once. And of course, the firemen did a lot of the work and that helped make the cost a lot more effective for getting it. But this station, was a key part when we were going to get our ISO ratings here reduced because now you have two stations, one on the west side, one on the east side, and that puts almost every single house in the township within five road miles of a fire station, which is a key element for getting an ISO reduction. There's just a handful of homes that don't quite fall into that radius, and I would suggest to you if your agent doesn't give you the break because you're two feet outside of it, maybe you need to look at some other insurance companies. Our ISO rating of three is exceptionally good in the state of Michigan. And unlike a uh, uh, scale of one to 10, which is what the ISOs are rated on, the lower the number, the better your insurance premiums are. Really, when we got down to a five, <clears throat> that's when you get the major break for your homeowner's insurance. The lower numbers below that primarily help businesses. So when we develop our tech park, those businesses should be very fortunate to be able to get low insurance premiums because we're now down to about a three on our ISO. As far as I know, I think that's the best in the state. I, I don't believe there are any ones or twos. I'm not aware of any. Some of the other townships out here are three because they actually did their ISO ratings the same time we did and we all benefited from learning the tricks of how you get it, uh, get the good numbers right off the bat. The station's all paid for. There's a base in the back. At one time, we had an ambulance company back here, but most of you who've been out here a long time know that one of the problems you have in a small community like this is when you need a medical ambulance, they don't like to station them out here because there aren't enough runs for them. So if somebody has a serious health problem, ultimately what you end up saying is you might kiss them goodbye because the ambulance was taking about 25 minutes to get here. Now that we have two stations and they both provide EMS, emergency medical service, the township is in a much better protected position. It, it was important for us to get EMS service in here. The fire department did a great job of taking that task on originally in the past and getting it here. And we still have that available for our residents today. So this is the station two that we uh, built last. And now we're gonna take it to the new station one, which is going to replace the old Dixie station. Okay, now we're standing in the new station one that will replace the old station on Dixie Highway. This building will be completely paid for, no mortgage or financing on it at all. Uh, the township will still be debt free, but instead of having that 70 year old building that's kind of been hodgepodge together, this is a purpose built building just for the Groveland Fire Department Station One headquarters and the Michigan State Police Detachment that's out here. And if uh, you read The Citizen recently, you probably know that we just signed a 20-year contract with the state police for this facility here. Now, what's behind me is basically this part of the building, this front half of it, is for the Michigan State Police Detachment that services the area. There's a couple of holding cells in there, so if they have an unruly individual they have to lock up, they'll now have some place here to keep them until they can take them to wherever they finally go. There's going to be an evidence locker with a certified evidence wall that has some special requirements for the uh, chain of command on the evidence, and then several offices here. In the middle of this area is going to be a common uh, break area or uh, conference area that both the state police and the fire department will use. And then behind on the rest of this inside part of the building, the other half is going to be for the fire department with some bunk rooms and the necessary stuff they need. We'll take you a little bit to the other side of the masonry wall, which is how we break, fire break the, the building so that the back part has all the service space and you'll see all of them have tall doors. All of the equipment will be able to get in. Our equipment will be here and so will the truck that they call the Bearcat. You might have seen it. It's kind of a big black 
armored vehicle they use for special conditions, that's going to be parked in the back here as well. We'll take you there in a minute. Uh, this building is actually kind of the beginning of our tech park. The Task Force One building is off to my left here, which was the first building we did for a proof of concept to use the old gravel pit, which has all been mined out on this side. And for those of you who don't know, we'll do another video to talk about the tech park and what happened and the history behind that piece of property and how we got it. But this is our building and it stays our building, but it's going to house the fire department headquarters building. We'll release the old building to the contractor. That's how part of it's being paid for. And the state police will be in here and there. Uh, I think everybody's pretty excited to get here. I know the um, second in command at this detachment here actually lives in Grand Blanc and he's excited to be here because it'll be very close for him. Uh, going forward, but this is it. We'll let you see the building should be done in March of 2025. I'm sure we'll have a dedication and an opportunity for everybody to see the facility when it's all done and finished off in here. Uh, they're going to have the whole winter here now to be able to do the inside of the building. It's pretty well all set up for the rest of it. So that's it for the buildings in Groveland Township. This is a long story about what used to be part of a uh, proposed uh, gravel pit and then uh, an effort to try and make it a Stablex site to, to take care of hazardous material. And finally, now it's the township's property. We own it and we're putting it to good public use for the community. And this building will be, like our other buildings, completely uh, paid for, no financing at all. Uh, and that's how we typically do it. And that's part of the reason why our township has been in such sterling position financially. One item I'd like to mention that I think you might find of interest, you'll notice on the building behind me, the bottom area of the building all the way around is currently being covered with plywood. That's because the plans call for that to be stoned. And uh, Barry has advised me that he's actually been setting aside stone from the pit. So it'll be our stone from our own pit doing the bottom part of this building as they go around. So the next videos we're going to do is one about the ORV Park and Big Sky Drive and the history behind that if you don't know it and then we're going to do one on this actual whole development here and what's planned for it and what it was originally proposed to do in the Stablex history in it because if you haven't been out here since the 70s you don't know a lot of the really uh, many twists and turns that have happened on the property out here. So that's it for this one. Have a great day.